Shalom. I like to first start off by giving all praise, glory, honor, and respect going to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. I like to give double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that do rule well. <clears throat> I got a, I got a quick little lesson on um if you deny the Lord, he should deny you. I'm I'm hop straight to it. This is Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And that, that's that's plain. It tell you straight up. All right. You want to have fun? All right, I'm at real motherfucking funny when this shit kick off. Because how, how you ashamed, man? To wear a garment? To hold your Bible and read the Bible? They always say knowledge is power. And the best power you can have come from the scriptures. This the real knowledge. But your ass scared to walk around with the Bible. Or because they call it a dress. Man, I love my garment. You in a dress so a raw ass dress. What the fuck is wrong with you? Niggas. And only niggas care about what other niggas say. It's only niggas. Niggas looking for approval from another nigga. What's wrong with you, man? Fucking bugged out. My next scripture is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33. <clears throat> I'm going to start at 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And it's, it's plain like, you out there in the streets, you around some niggas, you ain't going to sit there and try to fit in, act like a nigga. You're going to tell their ass straight up. Nah, bro, I don't do that shit no more. They going to ask you why. Why don't you eat the pork? Why don't you smoke weed? Why you ain't trying to fuck with that bitch? Fuck a nigga. Walk the band. Like now, bro, according to the scriptures, we walk the band, you're going to go into the hole of your dig on them and let them know. According to the scriptures, how you supposed to be. And you know a lot of motherfuckers, after that happened, they act shady towards you. They don't want to deal with you because they see you on a whole new level or something. they like, nah, bro, you want some other shit. We walk the band, but fuck them niggas. They niggas. They fucking two-thirds. You want to die with them niggas? Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men... Him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. It's plain, man. Don't bullshit the most high, bro. You you can't bullshit the most high. You can't bullshit your how about Hashem, your how shy, man. They gonna know. Even if in your head you think like, nah, man, I, I might not go. I'm not gonna go around because I don't wanna see them how I act not, how I'm supposed to be living. Man, what? Fuck them niggas. I want to go around them niggas because they niggas, man. Fucking Nick Salaki. They ain't even niggas. They niggars. Nigga just mean to be dark skinned. Matter of fact, before I grab my next scripture, we're going to get that real quick. What a nigga art is. Out the Winston Simplified Dictionary. Kind of old book. Okay. Right here it says. <clears throat> I'm going to read nigger first. It says nigger, spelled N-I-G-G-E-R. Right, right there. It says, Negro, dark-skinned one. A negro, now usually a contemptuous or vigular term. Any dark-skinned person. Prevailing among or characteristics of American Negroes. This is what niggard lead me. Niggard. It says. A stingy. 
convictuous person, misir, misir, meaningly convictuous, miserly, stingy. So when somebody call you a nigga, if you are dark skin, you are a nigga. Period. No matter who said it, you are a nigga. Period. Even they tell you in the scriptures, I believe in Acts, the um, 13th chapter, that they was called niggas. But the term is nigga art. I'm stingy, ain't shit ass nigga arts. <clears throat> but back to topic, let's get Luke chapter 9. This is Luke chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 25. It says, For what is a man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be a castaway? You don't profit nothing from doing that shit. You got the truth. You got your ticket to everlasting life. And the kingdom, you're going to get double everything you lost on this side. But you say, no, nah, fuck the kingdom. You want your shit on this side. That shit bugged out. That shit bugged all the way out. This shit on this side not even good anyway. The food not real. The water not good. Your bitch ain't shit. That shit bugged all the way the fuck out. Ain't no order. We still under the curse. How do you... How you want to live on this side wealthy if we still under the curses? This is Luke chapter 9 verse 25 again. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be a castaway? Damn. Verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Damn, man. That, that shit bugged out. This, I'm going to read verse 25 one more time. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be a castaway? And on another note, these motherfuckers in the rap industry, they lose they self. They lose their integrity. They turn to a whole nother motherfucking person because you got to go do some wicked ass shit to make such and such amount of money. What? You gonna let another man put his rod in you for some fucking money? Some shit that ain't, oh. Some money that ain't fucking real? That shit so bugged out. Damn that shit bugged out. Damn that shit bugged out, man. This this is 2 Timothy verse 2. I mean Salaki. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. It says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And see that we gotta go through these tribulations for my sheep. Matter of fact. Hold on, I think it might be in this chapter. Come on. I'm going um, to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, and then I'm going to jump down to 11 and 12. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier for Yahweh Shammah. Yeah, matter of fact, it's lock here.
I'm going to read 3 and 4. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier for your house, So let's say, hey, as a good soldier, man. A good soldier in the military gonna put up with all that shit. They gonna put up with all that shit and still go get their job done and make the kill. Verse 4. No man that warreth entangling himself with the affairs of this life. So if you if you actually dealing, if you matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna break down like this. If you in the war, you not Thinking about why you out there getting shot at, you not thinking about what your motherfucking girl back home doing. You thinking about how these motherfucking bullets is flying past your head and how the fuck you gonna stay down and not get your fucking cranium cracked. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Okay. In the war, if you thinking about the war, you trying to get this shit over with and done, okay, you gonna please that motherfucker, you gonna please your sergeant or whoever over you. The same thing go for the truth, man. If you out here doing this work for the most high, holy, truthfully, sincerely, and with charity, man, you will please the most high. If you're doing this thing for real, you got to be doing this for real, man. I'm going to skip down to 11. It's a, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we should also live with him. What that mean? You ain't put... First, you might die in this truth, but that's all part of the test. That's the part of your trials and your tribulations that you got to go through to prove yourself worthy and to the most high. Verse 12, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. When, when your house shot came to the earth, he ain't do nothing but suffer. I'm talking about, that's a mighty man. Mighty could have... Could have did anything he wanted. He turned water into wine, all that. He could have did anything. So if he, if he didn't sit there and just turn some water into wine, he could have made some lions come up, kill the niggas. He could have called a fleet of angels. He could have did whatever. But he humbly sat there, and let motherfuckers talk shit, let motherfuckers fuck with him, do X, Y, and Z to him, and took it. And now one time, call just say you bitch ass niggas ain't. Damn. Verse twelve again. If we suffer, if we suffer, we shall also reign with them. If we deny him, he also will deny us. It, it's it's evident, man. It's evident. Scriptures use repetition for a reason. Because, first of all, you learn through repetition. But you gotta tell Jake shit over and over and over and over and over again. Just so it can actually hit their ass at least one time. Because Jake can hear you saying something. You say it the first time, they alright. They heard it, but they not paying it no mind. Man. You push that word to them like three, four, maybe five, six times. They'll eventually get it. This is going to be my last scripture though. First Peter chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So, all these tribulations... You got to go through this. If you're not going through that, it's kind of like shit. Is he dealing? But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Mashiach's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Mashiach, Happy ye, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the most high 
resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Lock you. Ooh. Mm. No, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and read all that. Shalaki. This first Peter. Chapter 4, I'm going to start at 12. I'm, I'm just going to read to 19 all the way to the end. Because we got the gist of it that you, in order to get saved, you're going to have to go through this stuff. And you, you're you going to have to go through tribulation, trial and tribulation. But on top of that, you can't be on the back road just denying the most high on some low-key stuff. Like, you can't be foo-foo with this thing. You got you to gotta be for real. Like, this this is my whole problem. If a nigga can gang bang and be loyal to some unfaithful niggas and be loyal to they whole little set and do anything that for they set, how come you can't be loyal to the brothers and the truth? Or the um or, or to the truth itself, to the most high. You believe you claim you believe in God, why can't you be loyal to him? This shit is fucking bugged out. Be loved. Think it is not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Mashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Mashiach, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a, as a murth, murderer or as a thief. I think that's supposed to say murderer. So lucky. I'm going to um, find out real quick. God, they're supposed to say murderer. So lock you. This first Peter chapter four, verse fifteen again. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's and other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory glorify so lock you. But let him glorify the Most High on his be on this behalf, for this is the come that judgment must be at the house. For this time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what well shall the end be of them that obey not the Most? The Salakia. This is verse seventeen. For this time. Is come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of the Most High commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing. As unto a faithful creator. With that, I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honor and respect due to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. I'd like to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who do rule well. And salutations to the Akim out here pushing his work with truth, sincerity, and with charity, and to the hopeful elect. To you, brothers, I'd like to say Shalom.